Good morning. Good to see everyone today. I'm glad to be here. Um, <clears throat> it's always nice when they let me out of my cage and get, get to hang out with some adults. Um, we do have a number of teenagers here today I'm really excited about. Um, we have a, our thank you lunches today, um, so I encourage you to stay afterwards and um, eat. Help, and eat. We got plenty of food, and we, the, us as the youth group, we'd like to say thank you for all that you do for us. So I, I would I encourage you to come stay and meet some of our teenagers and eat some of the soup and things that we have. So um, I'm finishing up Pastor Tim's um, series on um, faith, and um, he and so I, I get to talk about Peter. Now, before I talk about Peter, I want to I want to let you know I am very good at confusing the P's. Sometimes I say Paul, sometimes I say Peter. Just I don't know why. It's just something with the P words. It just messes me up. So um, if I say if I say Paul, please forgive me. I'm going to do my best to say Peter um, during this time. So Peter was no is known for being uh, is known for his dramatic um, kind of personality. He he's very impulsive. He's very out there. He tends to act before thinking um, quite often. Um, he's famous for several pivotal moments in Scripture, um, from walking on water to cutting off the ear of a servant. One of those impulsive moments, um, denying uh, Jesus three times uh, before his crucifixion, um, being restored after his after by Jesus, and then. Um, and after Jesus' ascension, Peter stood up and boldly preached um, out, uh, to the people. Over 3,000 people were saved. Um, and then he also received a vision to go and preach to the Gentiles, which was crucial to spreading the gospel and growing the church outside of the Jewish culture uh, and community. Peter was part of Jesus' inner circle. He was, he, you know, there are several instances where it was Peter, um, uh, um, Peter, John, and um, James, that was only with Jesus. There were several instances where they were kind of separated. So he was very close with Jesus. Um, Peter authored two books of the New Testament, First and Second Peter. Um, and many scholars believe that Peter was martyred in Rome under um, the Emperor Nero. So um, Peter, uh, Peter had a pretty crazy life um, growing up. Um, he was a fisherman and chosen by Jesus to be a, a, a disciple. And then one of the three um, core uh, of the disciples um, and then um, later became an apostle and was pivotal in growing the church and spreading the gospel throughout the nation. Um, Peter gets Peter gets a lot of grief for um, denying Jesus three times after the crucifixion. People like to talk about that quite often. One of Peter's um, uh, failures, um, but despite his moment of that moment of failure, Peter had several moments of great faith where he stood strong and stood firm before and after. Um, without Peter, we wouldn't we, we wouldn't have the church that that we do today. So we're going to take. I want to take a look at at a at a section of scripture that talks and kind of highlights um, one of Peter's um, moments of great faith. And we're going to be in Matthew chapter fourteen. And I've got some um, some of my really great teenagers. They're going to come up here and help us read this today. Come on, ladies. Now this section of scripture it leads um, leading up to the scripture. Uh, passage. Jesus had, Jesus had just fed the 5,000, and he sends the disciples away, and he goes up into this mountain to pray um, and to be alone with God. So let's open our Bibles to uh, Matthew 14 and follow along with these lovely ladies. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After dismissing the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Well into the night he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat was already some distance from land, battered by the waves because the wind was against them. Jesus came towards them, walking on the sea very early in the morning. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Immediately Jesus spoke to them, Have courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter answered him, command me to come on to the water. He said, Come. And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid, and, be and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand 
caught hold of him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Why do you doubt? When they got into the boat and got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those in the boat worshipped him and said, Truly you are the Son of God. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate you. All right, so there's kind of a lot going on here in this passage. Um, so, but I want to take, I want to look at three things um, that um, will kind of help us grow in our faith. Some three things that we can kind of get from this scripture to kind of help us grow in our faith. The first thing is that we're never out of Jesus' sight. We're never out of God's sight. We're all, he's always there watching us. See, after Jesus sends his disciples out on this boat, he goes up to this mountain to pray. Now, um, the mountain, uh, this, this story kind of unfolds in the Sea of Galilee, which lies in the lower portion of the Jordan Valley uh, in, the mount, in a mountain range that rises up to 4,000 feet above sea level. This mountain that we believe that Jesus went up to, it kind of overlooks the Sea of Galilee. If you see this picture up here, this is an actual view. If we got, this is an actual view from the mountain that we, fit, that we believe Jesus was at. And if you can see, you, you can see, oh, Jesus could have seen over the, entire, um, over the entire Sea of Galilee. So even though the disciples felt like Jesus wasn't with them, Jesus was never, they were never out of Jesus' sight. Jesus could always see, his, always see the disciples. Um, so the Sea of Galilee is kind of famous for sudden storms to, to, and sudden, sudden and violent storms to kind of erupt. And that's exactly what happened um, this time whenever the disciples go out to, um, to, uh, uh, to travel across the sea. The disciples were alone in the middle of this great sea, um, getting beaten up by the wind and waves, um, thinking that they were going to die. Just, you know, everything, I mean, just their boat was small. It, everything, you know, they, their savior, their, their leader was gone. They didn't know where he was at. Everything was just, just chaos in their, in their life at that moment. And, you know, did you ever get to feeling like that? Feeling like everything is chaos, nothing is going right, right? Everything, you, you, you just keep getting beaten up by one thing going wrong after another. Um, your car won't start. Um, your tire, you have a flat tire. Sometimes um, so, someone backs into you. Um, the baby won't stop crying, and the top, and then top it all off, your mom, your mother-in-law wants to come and visit. Just nothing seems to be going your way. Have anybody ha- ever had one of those weeks? Yeah, um, I kind of, you know... I, I kind of actually had a weekend, not, not quite that bad, but a weekend kind of like that with just nothing was going my way. You know, uh, most of you know my son is up in Mariana at a camp serving um, for the summer, and um, his truck is messing up. So I got some parts and head, headed up there um, Friday evening to help him work on his truck. And when we got up there, nothing was going right, and nothing worked, and it was just all kinds of just, no, nothing was fitting. So now... I had to go, we had to go back and reorder new parts and try it next time. It's just, just, you know, all this time it seemed like it was wasted. Like, okay, what is going on here? And, you know, that's so, so far, you know, that happens so often in our lives where we just feel like, God, where are you? Right? And that's kind of where the disciples were here. This storm that the disciples were going through, it was not a surprise to Jesus. He knew it was coming before he even sent the disciples in the boat. The disciples may have, have thought Jesus had left them, but in reality, the disciples were never out of Jesus' sight. When life, when life gets too much, whenever we feel like we're all alone and nothing is going right, Jesus, or we're never out of Jesus' sight. He's always there watching over us and looking over us. We may not be able to see him in the moment in the chaos, but he can always see us. He is not surprised by that car accident or that missed appointment, that flat tire, the dead battery, the leaky roof, or anything else that God throws, anything else the world throws at us. Jesus is not surprised by that. God's not surprised by those things. Jesus always, see, Jesus comes to these disciples in the middle of, in the storm, in the middle of their storm, and he comes to us in the middle of our storms in our life. It might not be the time that we think he needs to be there. We may think he, we're like, all right, when is this going to come? When are you coming? But he knows exactly when he needs to be there. Jesus had, Jesus had waited until the boat was far as possible from land. 
He, Jesus waited until that boat was way out there, until the disciples were, in, were at their wits' end. They, couldn't, they didn't think anything was going to get, anything could happen. Jesus was testing the disciples' faith. He, was, he wanted to remove every, every human prop that, that, that could be. So, so, like, you know, they're like, there's nothing more we can do. We might as well just surrender. And then here comes Jesus. Jesus, Jesus was waiting for, for that moment to where they had to rely on something bigger than him, or on them. Jesus came walking on the water to show, to show Peter and the disciples that the, the thing that they feared the most, the thing that they thought was going to kill him, was just a tool, just a tool for him to come to them, for just something that, that God was using to grow their faith and make them stronger and rely on him more. See, we often fear the difficult experiences in life. We run away from them. We hide from them. We try to, try to get away from the hard stuff, the storms and the junk. But as we go through life and as we trust God, we discover that those fears, those, those crazy moments are the ones that bring us closest to God. The ones that, the ones that, that, that help us grow our faith even stronger. Several years ago, um, before I surrendered into ministry, I was, um, we, 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 were, we were living in Missouri. We, we were doing foster care, and um, it snowed one day, and the kids got out of school, and they're all like, we have to go sledding. Well, if you've never gone sledding, it's not the safest thing to do. And so after, after several hours of sledding, our, one of our, um, my, our oldest foster son, Matt, he said, one more time down the hill. If anybody ever says one more time, don't go. <laughs> so we go down the hill one more time, and sure enough, I ended up breaking my back in two places. And that was the worst experience of my life at the time. Lay, I remember laying there thinking, God, what are you doing with this? But through that time, it showed me God's people serving us, and uh, helping us, picking up our kids, bringing us food, and it helped me grow closer to God. It gave me nothing to do but grow closer to God during that time. And I, pr- I wouldn't be standing here today doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for that moment. Those hard times in life, they bring you closer to God. They, they, they push you towards the, 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 your purpose. And that's what was happening to Peter and the disciples here. This, this, this um, story, this instance of the... Of, of the winds and the waves, they were pushing Peter and the other disciples towards God's plan for them. And the second thing we have to do is to get out of the boat. Peter realized when Peter finally realized Jesus was the one walking to them, he was, he he didn't he calls out to him and says, "Jesus, if it's you, let come out there. I want to come to you." So Jesus Jesus said, "All right, come." Peter jumps out of the boat and starts to walk on water. Now, we talk a lot about Jesus walking on water and how cool that is, right? I mean, but, I mean let's face it, if he's the Son of God. If he didn't walk on water, we'd be like, what? You know, I mean, we kind of expect Jesus to be able to do stuff like that. But this was an ordinary fisherman walking on the water. Jumps out of the boat and walks on water. Um, now, that's some cool stuff if you ask me. Peter getting out of the boat was a, it was a huge deal. Yes, the wind and wave the wind and waves had not stopped. Yeah, they were scared in the boat, but at least they were in a boat, right? You don't have a boat when you're standing on the water. He was much safer in that boat than he was on the water, but he climbed out anyway because he trusted Jesus. Now, um, we like uh, so we you know I want to call our these boats our comfort zone, right? It's kind of where we're comfortable in. It may be chaotic all around us, but if we're, but if we're somewhere that we're comfortable with, somewhere that we know, we, we, we're like, all right, well, maybe I can handle the chaos a little bit if I can just stay over in my little corner, right? You know, and you know, Peter and the disciples, most of them were fishermen. You know, even though the boat was chaotic, you know, they saw Jesus coming, and that could have been, that could have been good enough for them. They said, all right, I'm going to stay in my boat. I see Jesus, so everything's going to be okay. I'm going to stay here and chill in my little boat. But that wasn't good enough for Peter. Peter jumps out of that boat. We, if, when we stay in our comfort zone, we miss out on the things that God has in store for our, in our lives. 
We can't. Um, we 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 um, when we miss out on we miss out on do on on being part of God changing lives and doing great things. We make excuses, you know, to, we make up excuses to stay in our comfort zone. You know, I can't handle crying babies. Teenagers scare me. They kind of scare me too. Um, um, <laughs> not you guys. You guys are great. Um, teenage, you know. T- um, uh, kids, kids have way too much energy. I can't lead. Bi- I can't lead a Bible study. I can go to one. I can't lead one. We 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 make up these excuses. We we try to justify our actions, but in reality, Jesus has called us to get out of the boat. Jesus has called us to get moving. In Matthew twenty five, it says it says for. For um, I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Truly, I tell you, whether, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. See, Jesus is calling us to go, to get out of the boat, to get out of our comfort zone. To, to go and to serve, to go and to love on, to go and to care for the people around us. Are, you know, what's keeping you in the boat? What's keeping you in your comfort zone? Are you, you know, are you, are you getting out of your comfort zone? Are you serving? Are you clothing the naked? We have an agape house across the street that would love to help you with that. Are you visiting the sick? We have, you know, you, there's a church care ministry that we can hook you up to some people that you can visit at home. Um, there is a place in children's ministry, VBS, and the nursery for you. There is a place in the youth ministry, the worship arts, the media team, and many other ministries in this church for you to get out of the boat and start to serve and start to follow God's plan and start to grow your faith. Because nothing's going to grow your faith more than getting out of your comfort zone. Getting out, you know, um, whenever God called me to preach, I'm like, you're nuts. You can ask my wife, I didn't talk to anybody, let alone to a group of people. First time I ever talked in front of the church, I looked like this. And because I couldn't, if I looked at, if I was to look out there, I would be dead. We've got to stop, we've, we've got to stop living in that comfort zone. We've got to allow God to stretch us and let, allow, allow God to use us. You know, Peter jumps out of that boat and walks to Jesus, growing in his faith. And now, and that's a story to tell. That's a story like, guys, I got to walk on water. You know, I got to be, you know, I got to, to pray with a kid at VBS to, and they accepted Christ. I got to, you know, I, I got to uh, and buy some, uh, a kid or a student some shoes who needed them. I got to, I got to help somebody get food who had no food. God wants to use us in a mighty way. But we've got to get out of our comfort zone. We've got to get out of our boats and trust Him. And the third thing is to call out to Jesus. Yes, when we get out of the boat, it's going to get crazy. If you notice, when, G- when Peter got out of the boat, the wind and waves didn't stop. They kept going. They kept flash- trashing all around. It's, hard times are going to happen. People are going. People are going to attack you. Things are going to go wrong. Peter got out of the boat and walked on water, um, and everything was going great. He was heading to Jesus. The waves were crashing around him, and then all of a sudden, he started looking at the chaos. He took his eyes off of Jesus and started looking at the chaos around him. Guys, when we take our eyes off of Jesus and start looking at the chaos in this world, and there's a lot of it, we start to drown. We can feel like, we're, we can feel like nothing's going right. We can feel like we're hopeless, and the world is just going to crush us. You know, Peter, when he started to sink, he, started, you know, he was like started sinking and drowning. But Peter did something that a lot of us don't always do that don't always do immediately. First, you know, whenever we start to sink, we try to tread water, we try to grab, we try to, you know, do all these other things. But Peter does the one thing, he calls out to Jesus. He calls out, Jesus, save me, right? And immediately, Jesus reaches in, pulls him up, and puts him in the boat. 
And that's what Jesus does for us. Whenever we're, whenever, whenever we're out there, out of our comfort zone, we're serving and we're loving on people, we're following God's plan for our life, we're going to feel like we're sinking at some point. We're going to feel like the world is just not going right and maybe I, like, oh, maybe I messed up. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. But when we call out to Jesus, He will pick us up and bring us back to a safe place. He, he, he will minister to us and love on us. God called you to get out of the boat. But like I said before, we're not out of His sight. If we get out of that boat, He is there with us. We just got to keep our eyes on Him. So what's stopping you? What's stopping you from getting out of the boat? Yes, there's going to be a hard time. Um, um, you, there's going to be times when you feel like you're grounding and nothing's going right. But that's when we have to call out to Jesus. But the trick is, when we call out to Jesus, we have to let Him save us. And I say that because, you know, a lot of people are like, I'm, just, I'm, ask, I'm calling out, I'm asking, God to say, I'm asking God for help, and just nothing is happening. Um, and that reminds me of this, old, this story. Um, I'm, I, and so there's this man out fishing. Just bought a bunch of new fishing gear and was going out fishing. And things happen, his boat starts to sink. And so he's like gathering up his fishing gears, like, I just bought all this stuff. I'm not losing this. And he's praying, all right, God, save me. I need you to save me. And pretty soon this guy on this jet ski comes by and says, hey, you need some help? I can take you back. And looking at the jet ski, obviously all this fishing gear is not going to fit on that jet ski. And he's like, I can't leave my fishing gear. So I'll be good. Go ahead. And the jet ski goes off. And he's like, all right, God, you got to save me. Come on, what's going on? Pretty soon, this little ki- this kayak come paddles up, and it's like, "Hey, man, I can take you back to the shore." But you know, and he's like, "Oh no, I can't leave all this fishing gear." You know, so go on. I'll, God's going to take care of me, and so he's praying, "God, save me, save me." Well, time goes on, the man ends up drowning, goes to heaven. He's like, "God, why didn't you save me?" God's like, "I got, I brought you two boats. What's going on?" Sometimes, see, that's what we do. We hold on to the junk that's dragging us down. We're like, God, save me, but don't take this stuff away from me. I'm comfortable here. See, Peter had to get out of the boat. Peter had to get out of the boat. We have to, get, get, we have to let go of the junk that's holding us down. We have to let go of the anxieties and fears of our past, our past sin, our past aggression. We have to let go of those things. Give those to God and let Him take those away and pull us in. And sometimes we cry out to God for help, but we're not willing to let go of the struggle because it's comfortable. Humans are comfortable with comfortable, aren't we? Even in the chaos, we sometimes will find comfort, won't we? You know, I'm, just, I'm used to this. This is what I'm used to. This is how, this is how life has been. If, you know, I, I won't know how to act elsewhere. And when we take on that, 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 that mentality and we don't let God have have it, so therefore He can't pull us into the boat. He can't pull us to safety. We have to be willing to let go of our past regrets. We have to be willing to let go of our control and our anxiety and our worry. We have to learn to let go and follow God. God will grow our faith. He will strengthen us if we're willing to get out of the boat. If, we're, if, we, if we know that we're never out of His sight, if we're willing to get out of the boat and trust Him and call out to Him when things get crazy. So I want to encourage you to, to, to look at your boat and then get out of it. Step out of that comfort zone. Some of you, stepping out of that comfort zone may be something as simple as going to a Bible study. Some of it may be serving in a ministry. Some of it may be praying with somebody, taking food to somebody, holding a baby so a mom and dad can go to Bible study. Whatever whatever God is calling you to do, don't let the craziness of the world keep you from doing it. Because I promise you, it will strengthen you and lead you to where you need to go. Let's pray. Father God, thank You so much for 
for Jesus. Thank you for sending him to, uh, to, to push us and, and strengthen our faith, Lord. God, help each and one of us to, to identify our boats and our comfort zones and step out of it and trust you in faith that you are in charge and in control and that, that you are always watching over us, Lord. God, help us to walk in faith following you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.